Talking with Docs released a video a ways back on Ozempic, the touted miracle weight loss drug. And if berberin could be a replacement for Ozempic if you want to lose weight. In the video that they released, I was a little puzzled by some of their claims because looking at the scientific literature, I think that they may have gotten a few things incorrect. So I'd like to take a few moments and dive into the berberin literature and if it could act as a natural ozempic, including covering the mechanisms, the clinical evidence, and even offer some other things that could act as a natural ozempic. If you aren't familiar with Talking with Docs, it's a popular YouTube channel hosted by two board certified physicians, Dr. Zalzal and Dr. Weening, who explain different medical questions in fun, easy to understand language. If you aren't familiar with berberin, in brief, it's an herbal extract that's been around for hundreds of years, but has recently gotten more attention for its uh, multiple claimed health benefits, including weight loss. On the other hand, Ozempic is a drug that's been established to produce significant weight loss. So how do they stack up? Well, let's start things off by listening to their take before we discuss further. So what are the claims? What are they saying can help? I mean, they call it nature's Ozempic, uh, right? Because of weight loss. It can cause weight loss. So yep. everyone's saying, oh, you can lose weight with this. It can help your cardiac health. It can help your PCOS symptoms. Yep. It can lower your cholesterol. Yep, it's it anti-inflammatory anti benefits. Anti All these amazing things. I'm gonna start taking it right away. It really is amazing. Okay. okay. So how does it work? Okay, first of all, it's not nature's Ozempic because Ozempic and berberin have completely different mechanisms of action. Right now, we don't fully understand berberin's mechanism of action, but we do understand Ozempic's mechanism of action. And Ozempic binds to the GLP-1 receptors yep. in your cells, giving you the feeling that you're full even when you're not full after eating. Your stomach's distended, is it? sends out a hormone that makes you feel like your stomach's distended so you eat less. It has a ton of side effects associated with it. We've talked about it before in another video with right. someone who knows what they're talking about with Ozempic. Okay, so we talked about Ozempic's mechanism yep. of action and berberin acts completely differently. It's yep. more like a metformin action where it activates the AMPK enzyme pathway. Yep. Uh, not to get too uh, complicated, but it sort of helps uh, the role of insulin in your body, helps right. your body to stop being so insulin resistant. Right. And that's sort of, we thought to be the mechanism there. So they're completely different mechanisms of action. So it's not nature's Ozempic, even though everyone's still going to call it that for a long because time. Because Ozempic just, man, in the last three months, it's gone crazy. Okay, start things off by immediately dismissing berberin as nature's Ozempic. And they're actually absolutely correct. The mechanisms of action are entirely different. However, does that necessarily mean that it can't produce the same results? Well, we'll get into that. First, yes, berberin is believed to work through an enzyme called AMPK, which is not the case for Ozempic. Berberin, however, does not bind AMPK directly, but rather it affects other areas of the cell directly, like mitochondria, which then activate AMPK. This is uh, important because AMPK is heavily involved in the mechanisms like autophagy, increasing insulin sensitivity, and more. There's much more biology there, but we have too much to get to. Ozempic, however, is a slightly altered version of a naturally occurring protein in our body called GLP-1. GLP-1, when it binds your intestines, it stimulates them to send a nervous system signal to your pancreas to release more insulin. In addition, it can bind the pancreas directly and force it to release more insulin. However, from a weight loss perspective, it actually binds your brain cells and increases the feeling of satiety. Again, so much more to get into there. I have detailed videos breaking down all of that if you're interested. Anyway, the point is, yes, they're different. But you probably care if berberin, from a results perspective, is as effective as these powerful GLP-1 drugs. Well, let's discuss. Is there any good scientific evidence to support its role in weight loss? So I would say, in defense there. of the poor research, because there is almost none, to be very honest with you. Most of the studies that have shown that berberin has benefit are very small studies, 
short follow-up studies, and poorly run studies. And we've taught our viewers many different videos on how to assess the quality of a research paper or a research project. Right. Okay, we'll continue in a minute, but I've also taught on how to assess study quality, which is why I offer a short course on the matter. Uh, beyond that though, they mentioned there's almost no evidence berberin has a weight loss effect. And then they go on to discuss that the studies are poor quality. Okay, this is where I was a little baffled because I disagree somewhat. First, there's definitely evidence of berberin's weight loss effects. In fact, there are several studies looking at berberin and weight loss. So I would not say that there's almost no evidence. However, the layer is what is the quality of that research? The three main critiques levied are one, very small studies, two, short studies, and three, poorly run studies. Again, here I have to somewhat disagree. I will say most studies done on herbs and less drug-based research tends to be published in lower tier journals by smaller research groups that have less funding overall. That isn't a conspiracy, it's just a fact that pharmaceutical companies can afford to throw millions at a single study and big herb ain't got that kind of pull. So. We do have to rely on studies that aren't published in major journals like, I don't know, the New England Journal of Medicine, which has published on Ozempic-like drugs. So then, what evidence exists? Well, there are some randomized control trials, including many participants like this one. In this study, the researchers recruited over 600 participants across three groups and did show that berberin reduced body weight indices. For a randomized trial, that's a pretty big sample size. Unfortunately, it was not placebo controlled, which weakens the study interpretation to the point of Dr. Weaning. However, it isn't the only one. Other studies like this, which did use a placebo group and even compared against a, the drug metformin, which they mentioned, indicated berberin led to a weight loss compared to placebo. There was no difference between the berberin and metformin conditions. So, if we go through the critiques, one, small studies. No doubt these studies are smaller than most drug studies, but there's good reason for that, and if we constantly dismiss interventions like berberin merely on that fact, then we'll be dismissing all possible helpful interventions due to weaknesses of the studies, not because the actual substances, like berberin, don't actually work. So, I can see the argument from both sides. I'd also add that uh, many other molecules and interventions are heralded as working, although they too had few people in the studies. Think like taurine or glycine as examples. I'll have another point on this in a bit. Number two, short studies. I actually disagree here. There are many studies that last for shorter durations than many berberin studies. The berberin studies lasted around three to four months, and that might not seem like a very long time, but we're talking about weight loss, which is a pretty quick thing to experience, unlike something like I don't know, cancer risk or heart attack occurrence, where three months is woefully short. Three, poorly run studies. There's some truth to that. Some studies aren't the highest quality in the berberin literature, but uh, there are others that are double-blind, placebo-controlled, and randomized that indicate an effect. Then, as a final point before moving on, in this meta-analysis on berberin, the researchers indicate there's no weight loss effect of berberin. And yet, there is a change in waist circumference, which gives a better detail on fat loss and body composition changes. Also, the studies looking strictly at weight loss were fewer than those looking at waist circumference, which could contribute to why waist circumference was shown to improve with berberin, but weight loss did not. So overall, I do not agree that we have almost no evidence. I do not agree on the point about short study duration for an outcome like weight loss, but I do agree that we need more and better studies uh, from an application perspective, the evidence slightly leans in favor of berberin having some form of body composition effect, although I'd like to see much more data published to be sure. However, I don't think that there's a doubt that Ozempic and other GLP-1 drugs are much more effective and consistently so as most berberin trials, even though they might show an effect in some cases are limited to people with polycystic ovary syndrome, metabolic syndrome, and so on. GLP-1 drugs work almost universally with large effects, unlike berberin. 
at least with the evidence that we have now. So I also agree with the overall statement that bourbon is not nature's Ozempic. However, as promised, we'll discuss a few things that could be nature's Ozempic in a minute. Also, if you find value in this kind of work, I have a research review that includes videos, podcasts, written summaries with actionable takeaways, and much more on all kinds of health topics. It's called the Physionic Insiders. And in it, I've covered other content on berberine as well, including dosing strategies. If you're interested, it's linked in the description for you to check out. I hope to see you as an insider. So these two docs also discuss three things that could act as true natural Ozempic. Are they true? So glucose, we obviously can't tell people just to eat glucose, but no. if you eat complex carbohydrates like potatoes and sweet potatoes that some people say, oh, don't ever eat any carbohydrates. Complex carbs actually release glucose very slowly along the entire length of your intestine. And there are receptors there that GLP will be released from. So that's the first thing. Second thing, peptides and amino acids. So proteins, these other macronutrients cause GLP one to go up and cause you to feel full. Maybe this is actually why people that are on heavy duty keto and carnivore diets actually feel better and lose weight. And the last one is short chain free fatty acids. So we're not gonna tell people to eat diets high in fat necessarily, but interestingly fiber, when it is consumed in a healthy diet, there are bacteria in your gut, fermentable bacteria that break down the fiber into short uh, fatty acids that cause GLP-1. And this is one reason why you feel full. So there's ways to hack your own GLP-1. Like we discussed earlier, berberine's mechanism of action is not like Ozempic, but there are nutrients that do stimulate GLP-1. As mentioned, technically, glucose, otherwise known as sugar or carbohydrate, does stimulate GLP-1 release. But consuming sugar isn't the best uh, for health, nor does it have much of a satiating effect on its own. So slower digesting carbohydrates, like complex carbohydrates, think quinoa, oats, lentils, and so on, can be more filling. And one mechanism is an increase in GLP-1 through these carbohydrates. Now, in addition, protein, if you refer to the same review that I just posted, also stimulates GLP-1 release. And we know that protein is a strong satiety nutrient. Sources like fish, chicken, lentils, black beans, and so on. Finally, as mentioned, short chain fats, which can be stimulated in production by something like dietary fiber, seems to have a good amount of preclinical data indicating it raises GLP-1 levels. There's also some fiber studies in humans that indicate an increase in GLP-1, but admittedly, there are very few and they provide mixed results. So while fiber is beneficial in other ways, there's some uncertainty on the GLP-1 angle, at least for now. Okay, so we've covered a lot, although I genuinely think that we just scratched the surface here because there's so much more. But what are the takeaways here? Well, one, berberine is not nature's ozempic because although it might provide some benefit on body composition, the effect is almost without a doubt smaller than ozempic-like drugs. Not to mention that the mechanism of action is entirely different. Number two, there are true GLP-1 stimulators like complex carbohydrates and protein, for example. So if the mechanisms of GLP-1 is important to you, switching out foods for ones focused on those would do the trick. Again, likely not to the level of a literal injection of GLP-1, but that's probably not a surprise. I'd likely focus more on satiety as a whole rather than the GLP-1 mechanism if it were me, but both will accomplish that too. Three, the docs did a great job. I do slightly disagree on how the evidence is portrayed, but I overall agree with their main points. Again, so much more to be said, but if you're interested in more on this, check out this video right here. Thanks for tuning in and I'll speak with you over there.